you've got another story to share with us I and do. has to deal with a Democratic candidate. Well, who are you talking about exactly? So we have our good friend Andrew Yang, please come on the show, who has uh, <laughs> just qualified to be the ninth person in the debates uh, coming up, which are the ones we need four polls having you above 2% along with uh, over 130 donations. He's been doing very well at that. So we have tech entrepreneur Andrew Yang on Thursday qualified for the third and fourth Democratic presidential debates this fall after a new poll showed him notching 2% above support among Iowa voters. Yang had already met the 130 uh, thousand donor threshold set by the Democratic National Committee and scored at least 2% on three approved polls, but basically he got into a fourth which is what i just said um i said at the last debate american politics had turned into a reality show <laughs> just like we were talking the previous story and the story before that and the story before that uh, every that week produced a reality show president yang said solutions don't come in 30 second sound bikes and the american people are tired of leadership condensed into 280 characters uh then he goes on with uh, Yang's campaign had, had previously announced that he qualified for the fall debates, but the DNC said that two of the polls, one from NBC News and the Wall Street Journal, and another from NBC News and SurveyMonkey would only count as one because reasons that are complicated that the DNC gets to pick and figure those things out. So I'm sure it's very fair, but nonetheless, he got in now. Eight other candidates have qualified for the third debate so far. Former Vice President Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, Amy Klobuchar, who we didn't think was gonna get in, but she did. How? She, I guess she, really? she got enough like a cone, cone. You know what? Because I did learn that in donations that if you uh, buy something through Act Blue, like like a shirt or something, that counts. And maybe just, she just sold a lot of cones, a oh cones, I should say. Oh my god! Anyway, had staplers. She wasn't selling staplers. She probably sold staplers too. <laughs> uh, Pete Buttigieg and uh, Beto O'Rourke, who we didn't think was going to get in either, but they are in because reasons. Daniel, also, someone in the live stream chat has asked, how, how come Representative Tulsi Gabbard has not met the qualifications because for the third debate? Granted, she met the first polls. part. Yeah, She has enough. She's far more than enough uh, contributions. She's only technically hit that special threshold that we've talked about in one of the polls. Now, the issue is that Castro who is the other person that has enough donations, has gotten through three out of the four polls so I would guess that if the Democratic Party was in a situation where Castro gets in and is eligible and Tulsi gets in and is eligible, but she gets in second, they're going to go, sorry, you weren't fast enough. So in all likelihood, based on, let me just read this and I'll, uh, I'll clarify a little more. Few other candidates are close to meeting the participation requirements. It's really just Castro and Tulsi. Uh, Castro, who has met the donor requirement, but it needs at least one more 2% poll. And Tulsi Gabbard has it, but she needs three more polls. So if I'm the Democratic Party and I, for some reason, don't like Tulsi Gabbard, um, it's more likely than not that she's going to not be in three polls while Castro just needs one. Mm -hmm. So if that plays out the way we expect it to play out, Tulsi will have been made eligible to the debates very much like Gravel has, but will not get in because Castro will get there first. That's what is likely to happen. Uh, but in this case, this is about Yang, who has gotten in. And again, I've said this since the beginning of the campaign before these guys really, the news was even talking about this election. Yang is the guy to look out for. Everyone else is pretty much set. We know roughly what their bases are and how they're going to move. Yang is unique in what he's fighting for with UBI and his other policies, how he talks about things, how he uh, doesn't, and this is a big thing I remember that a lot of people like that he's not into the quote unquote PC culture discussion. And Yang is someone that is going to affect this election in ways that we don't see now. And I think that as we've evolved through this, that he's probably going to affect a way a lot of Democrats act in future elections in a very similar way Maybe Republicans too, but a very similar way to how Bernie affected everything in 2016. Right. Yang is someone to watch out for. He's a very relevant person. Him getting in these debates and maybe if they stop making fun of him not wearing a tie, um, he'll say some stuff. But yeah. Yang is someone that I think would take 
at least five to seven percent of the millennial vote, which is going to be very relevant to Bernie Sanders. Yeah. But he is a candidate, and people are going to vote for him. And it's not our place to tell people to not vote for people. But yeah. Yang is important. Yeah. Uh, so I have my skeptics hat firmly on. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, let's hear it. So Yang meeting these thresholds and polls does not in any way guarantee that the DNC will recognize those. They have polls. though. It's it's the news has all been reporting it. The second the news recognize. is all reporting it, the DNC has accepted it. Okay. Yeah, I've, he's gonna be I, the only candidate who I think who's he's the ninth. He's been yeah. placed as the ninth. It's really they, they, they haven't announced lineups or anything yet though. They're they just saying we we acknowledge this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because remember, from their point of view, there's three people. If you take away Yang, you pull him out of the picture for a second, and you say, okay, he's not in temporarily, even though he is. The three people that are left to be on the debate stage that to get that eighth, that ninth, and tenth spot are Yang, Tulsi Gabbard, and Castro. Now, if you're the DNC, who do you not of those three do you not want in Tulsi the debate? Gabbard, they, and right. every, everyone's actually blown up on the chat. Everyone wants Tulsi Gabbard on that debate stage. And the thing is, yes, she has met the uh, the donor requirement where you need 130,000 uh, individual donors from 20 different states. But she uh, has malicious yeah, polling yeah, methodologies to yeah. work against. Yes, and the polling data and Remember, the polls they're, they're are working against her. No, Democrats she, with landlines. So you're really talking about older white people who watch cable news that are deciding... And these are polls conducted by Cable News, plus Wall Street Journal, plus NPR, plus New York one. Times, all of them. Yeah, so it's all the establishment media are conducting polls using methodology that helps establish people to figure out who has the best ratings to, like, Tulsi gets 1% to 2% in the polls because most of Tulsi supporters just are online, online yeah. have land, don't have landlines. And that's enough to say, well, you don't matter anymore. And that's yeah. enough to say Joe Biden's very relevant. So if you just on landlines, this puts Tulsi in a huge disadvantage or anyone that has people supporting them that are under 55. Yeah. Uh, she is new. She's been maligned by cable media. And the people that are counting the polls are the people that are demonizing her or the people that decide whether or not she gets in. And we've got an interesting story later on about Tulsi Gabbard. How once again, she's being demonized by political, but that's later on. But again, I do, I'm, I'm very happy to see Andrew Yang on the debate stage. I feel like his voice needs to be heard. Uh, again, he's at least someone that's not established. It's, it's, it's someone who's, yeah, I, I think it's, I think he could add in much of the debate and hopefully he'll have more time to really speak his policies. Um, but for a record, you know, of, of my top three, it's Bernie Sanders, Representative Tulsi Gabbard, and Andrew Yang. I feel those three bring different perspectives and they are able to garner a lot of support from a lot of voters. It's just the problem is the polling method is set up against progressive candidates, independent candidates, people that really are going to shake up the apple cart. Andrew Yang did a good job in securing himself. Now it's up to Tulsi Gabbard. And for the record, I want to see her on that yeah, debate stage. We all I feel, do. But I would love to see Castro not make it. That would be yeah, great. That would be great too. But be amazing. But because he has association with the Obama administration, oh. I fear that that could be the case, but the only way we can't make that happen is if we, you know, make our voices heard about which candidates we want to see on the debate stage. And Andrew Yang has made it. Um, but for my other candidate, my other uh, my other choice, Tulsi Gabbard, I want to see her on that debate stage too. And again, I'll go back. I think when we interviewed Jimmy Dore, uh, it was like you know to vote for uh, Joe Biden, press one. To vote for Kamala Harris, press two. To vote for Bernie Sanders, please wait. To vote for Tulsi Gabbard, please hang up the phone. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, that was one of the behind the scenes. We'll hear video, from you right? like well, carrier pigeon. No, wait, or, or was oh, the thing that was on there? That was on the full interview. Or we, yes. or we just gave you guys new information. Either one, enjoy. Either one. Yeah. Go in fact, go ahead and rewatch that interview with Jimmy Dore. It's yeah, really we fun. need the views, please. <laughs> <laughs>